Good morning on this ungodly hour of the morning. It is the uh, November 2nd, the anniversary of the Balfour Declaration, that brilliant idea. And it is the Day of the Dead if you're celebrating that sort of thing. So, welcome to my vlog. I'm still getting a sense of how to look at the camera, and obviously I haven't quite tidied up the office, as you can see behind me. Uh, hey, I wouldn't want to give you the wrong impression. So, this morning, just going to talk to you about a couple books I've been reading. I have been reading, let's see if I can get this right, here we go, Kevin Dutton and Andy McNabb's The Good Psychopath's Guide to Success. These are the same, well, Kevin Dutton is the same author as The Wisdom of Psychopaths and Flipnosis. I've read Wisdom of Psychopaths, which was really good. I've not read Flipnosis, although both of them were bestsellers. Uh, Kevin Dutton is a psychologist who, as you may have noticed from the titles, specializes in studying psych uh, psychopaths. Uh, Andy McNabb is a retired British SAS uh, member and a, uh, and, a no and a professional novelist and a psychopath. And The Wisdom of Psychopaths was a pop science examination of the nature of psychopathy. Good read, highly recommend it, don't have it here to point at. Uh, on the other hand, the uh, Good Psychopath's Guide to Success was based upon uh, Kevin Dutton's uh, fan mail where people asked for a guide to success, saying that Wizard of Psychopaths, hi, it's just kind of a pop psychology book. We want to know how do you use the insights you've given. Uh, short answer, the big thing is that psychopaths are kind of like Mr. Spock. They can turn off their emotions. Not like a full-blood Vulcan if we're going to get a little nerdy, but kind of like Mr. Spock in that they can choose whether or not to use their emotions or acknowledge them. There's, there's other things I'm dramatically simplifying things, of course. But, interesting, they also talk about something called decision fatigue. Now, decision fatigue talks about the idea that willpower is a fungible resource. If I spend willpower, for instance, forcing myself to get up early in the morning, as I have, or if I spend willpower to avoid eating cookies, as was the case in most willpower experiments that the book referred to, then I have less later when I have to get work on difficult math problems or any other show of willpower resist getting angry at somebody, and so forth and so forth. Now, why that strikes me as interesting is I've also been reading, oh, I've also been reading uh, Colin Morris's Start Your Own Religion. Okay, so I accidentally turned off the camera there. Let's try that again. So as I was saying, the reason that The Good Psychopath's Guide to Success and its talk about uh, decision fatigue was interesting, is that I was also reading Search on Religion by Colin Morris, and in it he makes an interesting comment that religions never die. The uh, idea is that atheism is the province of the intellectual with time on their hands, and that the common person lives too close to the bone and needs all the help they can get, ergo religion. I was thinking about that, and I was thinking about the fact that, oh, there goes my phone, and I was thinking about the fact that, as a secular person, I don't know if I'm an atheist person, probably, yeah, I'm guessing I'm an atheist, uh, one of the things I hear a lot is, oh, evolution or science is your religion. Now, I don't consider that true, but the person saying it to me, definitely considers it true. And that kind of pops back to the idea that, oh yes, the common person has religion, they live too close to the bone not to have it. Now, I've seen a number of YouTube atheists talk about the idea that this is just them misunderstanding. Maybe it's us misunderstanding. Maybe it's us misunderstanding what they're using religion for, where it's coming from. Just speculations like to throw out there. But the concept of living close to the bone and decision fatigue 
I was wondering about the attraction of argument from tradition, argument from authority, these things that are logical fallacies, but are relied upon quite heavily by the religious. Could it be that these are defenses to avoid decision fatigue for people who don't have spare willpower in their daily activity? Could that be an explanation as to why the uh, atheism is typically the province of the intellectual elite with time on their hands, the idle wealthy think the Renaissance and it being the culture elite that ends up dabbling in atheism. Obviously it's not a universal, I, I don't trust universals, but an interesting idea, pragmatic sort of source of that. All right, well that's where I am, that's just sort of the morning's musings. Uh, wonderful and non-controversial of course, so hopefully you enjoy this, have a great day.